The ship had already gone down, and we didn't know. And how long did the search go on? Seven days. But they didn't start searching for th until three days after, so it was ten days in total that we just sat there and waited. Everybody knows someone that's lost at sea, and I don't know why we don't worry more. I don't know why, because I guess it's, it's their job, and, and yeah. they go to sea, and we have a safe trip. Yeah. We say it to everyone that yeah. we know that's going fishing, but you don't think that they won't come back. The next morning, we relocated to Marblehead down the coast to meet up with yacht Nirvana, who was going to take us south to Boston and then on to Plymouth. A beautiful day for sailing. It's a perfect day for sailing, it's yeah. It's a perfect day for sailing. And no, no other boat out. Nirvana is an 80-foot maxi with an exceptional pedigree, winning virtually every classic ocean regatta for five years after she was built in 1982. As this is the first vessel that could plausibly take us all the way to New York, I decided to explore down below. This is the galley area um, as we travel along. We're clearly at something of an angle at the moment, as you can see. The, uh, but the one thing to note about the galley area is that it is incredibly plush. Now, normally, racing boats, the maxi racing boats like this, are very, very spartan. It's just a bare bit of them, and they sleep in bunks. But this one, this particular one, as you can see around me, it's plush, it's leather. It's like built for tall people. It's fantastic. Let's have a look at the main bedroom. This is ridiculous. Let's have a look at that main bedroom, all right? This would be a bunk bed. This is the captain's quarters. Comes with plush bedding area, comes with full length mirror, comes with lovely view of your cruise legs. But most of all, apart from we get past the sofa area, <laughs> ta-da, a bath, which is the most pointless thing because obviously all the water would run down that end. And it's little touches like this that charmed its current owner, Charlie, into buying the boat 11 years ago. And who was the rich man who found the money to build this monster? It was Marvin Green, yeah. who was uh, a television producer. A television producer? That's why this has a television. We in can't there. imagine that a television producer <laughs> would make that sort of money. There would be letters in the Daily Mail in England if a television producer managed to make that money. What did he produce? Sesame Street. Sesame Street. Which was quite a success. Yeah, yeah. So the profits from Sesame Street went to build yes. this, this well, state-of-the-art racing bay. Nirvana was heading off to the Caribbean, so wouldn't be hanging around for long in Boston. So you're leaving here what time? Uh, we'll be leaving here promptly at 4 o'clock today. 4 o'clock in the afternoon? Correct. So we're not going to spend the night in Boston having a tour of all the Irish bars by the sound of it? Uh, unfortunately, no. OK. Uh, so, all right, 4 o'clock. That gives us about uh, five hours in Boston to see everything and do everything. OK. Oh, Jesus! Now, when they say it's comfortable down here, you know, it's not most people's definition of comfort. <laughs> <laughs> Brief appearance by the director there. If Jimmy Raquet had a boat, this is what it'd be like. Boston greeted the golden dawn of the American Revolution by dumping her British tax tea into the harbour. Boston Tea Party happened just over there, behind me. And, and obviously, this is the point where Dara becomes extremely Irish. And I, for the purposes, of this particular visit will become very Welsh. 
because uh, I have to say that uh, there is no point in standing up, particularly for Great Britain, in this particular stretch of water. This is where we celebrate American liberty. My own private history, I spent some time here. I'm hoping to sneak away and just have a look at some of the old homes. Oh, it's going back in Boston, out of Puritan New England, and into proper Irish Catholic Boston. In the center of Boston Common is a statue called America, a memorial to those who fought in the Civil War. It seemed a good place to review the task ahead. Their letter says quite emphatically, the choice of vessel is up to you. However, this is a very important event for the city of New York and the American people, and all craft will be reviewed on the day. Yeah, well, like out of five? Well, I'm, I'm we don't know how many are turning up. What if the flotilla is huge? Then we want to make some. If, if we're reviewed really harshly by you know the New York Times, apparently the show shuts down in a day. That's Frank Rich in the New York Times. They very well Boom. shuts the show. Just New York people we, we, make instant decisions. Yeah. Your boat sucks. That sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. What I'm baffled about Bridges. is why something sucking should be a bad thing. Surely something sucking is a very good thing. Yeah. Someone says you suck, I'd say thank you. You know, or oh, that sucks. Thank you very much. What's wrong with the Americans? They think sucking is a bad thing. Hey, you suck. <laughs> I, I do. I've always left my curtains open again. But no, don't you think sucking's got to be a good thing? OK, all right. But that's probably not what they mean when they say that to us. Why, yeah, are, you being drawn, why are you being drawn into this? <laughs> yeah, I'm on his side. Yes. <laughs> why are you being drawn in? It's been suggested that we go and bone up on liberty. Ooh, or at least one of us does. The, uh... Liberty. You're very good for this. Fraternity, yeah. equality. Yeah, oh, I do I equality. See. I'm all about equality. You're going to do equality. This You're going to do fraternity. You're going to, I'm to a pub. Actually, I'm going to go to a pub and try mm. and see if I can nail the Boston accent. Um, Accents and dialogues, nostalgia. Yeah. And I'm going to go and do liberty. Yes, yeah, you are. Liberty. Yes, you are. Thanks. Good man. <sighs> Shall we walk out? <laughs> Shall we walk out of shot? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> So while I did this wander downtown, I hopped in a cab west to revisit some old haunts that I was first in as a 20-year-old. 20 years old, by the way, note that. The legal drinking age in Boston is 21. I didn't see that much of Boston, really. I mean, because I was working, like, 13-hour shifts in the airport, and I'm not going to bring it there. Um, and then there was a place where we sat around all day, just a lot of us Irish people drinking illegally, which was our flat. I can bring it there. You see, freedom is everywhere in Boston. Freedom here for these people here. Freedom for these people here. Freedom and, uh, well, perhaps, perhaps not so much freedom for those people there. But Boston, for me, was a perfect place to start learning a real classic American accent with Professor Connolly. A lot of most American accents have um, a, a, the rhotic R. We, can, yes. we, we linguists can say that sort of thing to each yeah, other. They'll, 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 yeah. But actually, in Boston, they don't. So the word car, which we say, we say you know, like this, car. car, with mm -hmm. a quite a long... There are, there are two different pronunciations there, but they're both non-rhotic. Go on, then. So uh, you can say car, which is... Or you could say ka. Ka. Yeah. Ka. And that's when ka. people are trying to imitate a Boston accent. They'll say things like park your car in the Harvard Yard. <laughs> very few people actually <laughs> say great. that. Park your car in the Harvard Yard. Yeah, you've got the idea. Oh, exactly. how was that? Okay, six, It was seven, pretty seven, good, yeah. Six, no, it was terrible. After the revolution, Boston continued to bang a drum for liberty. In the 1780s, Massachusetts became the first state to abolish slavery. I'm meeting Beverly Morgan Welch at the African Meeting House, built in 1806, and one of the first black churches in America. In this building, this, this very building we're standing in, there were important speeches made, and, and people got up and made testament and made and pushed forward for the abolition of slavery. Absolutely. This is the really nexus of the abolitionist movement. And black people are not um, people who are as shy and as timid and as shackled, if you will, as the history presents itself. And they are talking